We have some bad news for the climate. Uh, on Thursday, the peer-reviewed British public scientific journals published an article which states that humanity may have passed what they call the point of no return on climate change, suggesting that if we were to even somehow miraculously stop putting carbon in the atmosphere, it's not going to happen, uh, we would still not be able to stop catastrophic climate change coming our way. So now it says the study suggests that the only way really to move forward, other than, of course, cutting carbon emissions, is to extract enormous amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In fact, uh, one of the uh, study's two lead authors told Future Human, uh, this is uh, Jorgen Randers, he says the crisis will simply not stop from cutting man-made greenhouse gases. That doesn't mean that we, of course, should not not you know, cut emissions, but according to Randers, that's not going to be the only thing. We actually have to remove carbon from the atmosphere now. Humanity, stress Randers, should accelerate its effort to cut greenhouse gas emissions and start developing the technologies for large-scale removal of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. And so, again, the, the study set suggests that we are past that point of no return. So what exactly does that mean? Let's kind of parse that out a little bit. Um, the researchers describe a threshold which, once surpassed, will fundamentally change the dynamics of the climate system, including by triggering irreversible processes like melting of the permafrost, drying of the rainforests, and acidification of the oceans, of which, of course, we're starting to see. So now the researchers used a, a computer model to arrive at this result called Eskimo to simulate outcomes from various levels of CO2 reductions until the year 2500. They concluded that even an immediate reduction to zero greenhouse gas emissions would result in a three degree Celsius rise in global temperatures by 2500. Now, that's a long time, right? But understand, too, climate operates on a very long time scale. That said, they didn't just look at 2500. They actually looked at immediate results, too. Using a more realistic simulation model in which carbon emissions peak in the 2030s, and then decline by zero by the turn of the next century. The researchers still found the planet would warm by the same 3 degrees Celsius, while sea levels would be 10 feet higher than they were back in 1850. Now again, that is a really rapid uh, change in, in the climate. Usually it takes tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years to make such a change from one you know, climate period to the other except that we are making this change in hundreds of years versus tens of thousands. And so that is very concerning. That, that is the evidence that humans are impacting the climate in a very big way. And by humans, generally, it's human corporations, um, which are responsible for about 70% of the total emissions uh, in the world. And so they're responsible, just 100 corporations are responsible for 70% of the emissions in the world. It, it's insane. Uh, now, as far as the results of this, right? So look, by the end of the century, we're going to see at least eight to, uh, I think, one to eight feet of sea level rise. Now, I understand that's a big variability, right? But even like one foot can flood a lot of coastal areas. And so look, even a few inches, on your floor, right? Uh, on your street. Imagine three inches, four inches of standing water now all over your road, on your street, in your lawn, in your house. Are you going to live in that area? You're going to be able to live there? Conduct commerce? No. No, that's, that's the problem. And so that's going to be not only a humanitarian disaster because then all these people got to move out of the area, but it's going to be an economic disaster as well. I mean, imagine just, what, six, seven inches of standing water in the streets of New York City. Well, that means that people have got to move out of New York City. Gone. you got to go and you got to come inward to a place that is not flooded anymore. And so imagine all those millions of people going inward into the interior of the country. Uh, Miami, for example. You would also have to do that. Miami is going to be almost underwater by the end of the century, like a lot of these coastal areas. And so 
what happens to all the jobs? What happens to the all, you know, the industrial and economic centers uh, of these giant cities? They got to go in New York they, or they got to go uh, from New York into the interior of the country. And so you would have to have all these industrial and economic centers and these homes rebuilt in other places. Because the old ones, again, will be unusable. They'll be underwater. Just a couple of inches of water will destroy your home. Make it unlivable. Big problem. Big problem. Uh, and so that's what, uh, and again, this is what is unfathomable to people because they don't think about it in these terms. And we need to start thinking in those terms. Okay. Uh, and so, I mean, 2,500 though, at the end of the century, I know a lot of people watching will be like, well, I'll be dead. Okay. You know, but that's, that's not a problem. That's not a thing that you want to leave for your kids and your grandkids either. And so your descendants, and again, it's not just rising sea level, but it's also accelerated melting of the Arctic circle, carb releasing trapped carbon dioxide. Now, melting this permafrost, remember, there's some viruses in there. You think coronavirus isn't bad. Well, just wait till you uh, meet some of those other viruses that are far worse, that are have been hibernating in the ice. Not only that, but you also may have an increase of water vapor, methane, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which will cause temperatures to rise, as those are greenhouse gases, um, which, of course leads to that runaway warming, right? Uh, and so you have temperatures rise. I mean, it's not a good thing. Let's take a, the desert areas, right? Desert, uh, desertification. So now the, while the coasts are getting inundated by water, the interiors of the countries are also seeing an increase in desert area. Places that are already deserts will grow bigger, larger, Prairies will turn, and, and savannas will turn into deserts. Forested areas will turn into savannas. And you'll have all this just gigantic amount of change in the areas where people live, where they can live, where they can grow food, where they can build civilization. And so it's a big problem. That is a big problem. Uh, and so we've seen it coming too. We've, we've been watching this happen um, I mean, you know, for a long time, we've been looking at the effects of putting all this greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Uh, look, even back in the 1950s, you had uh, Exxon Mobil scientists coming and saying, there's a real problem here. Look at the rates of how much it's warming since the start of the Industrial Revolution. These are big problems. We need to do something about this. Um, and yet, what did ExxonMobil do? What did these companies do? They decided to ignore it and to try to muddy the waters. And now it appears that we're too late to just get by with cutting emissions. So now that said, right, we could have done things easier. Now it's going to be a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. And so there's the other thing, right? So now we have to develop technology to try to put the genie back in the bottle, so to speak. Right um, now on that, Randers said in this uh, in this study that it's a very big job. It's the equivalent to the work of, involved in putting all that man-made CO2 into the atmosphere in the first place, which has taken up to 100 to 200 years of industrial activity. So getting it out again, he says, will be the same type of effort. So now that said, why don't we start looking at this uh, as an opportunity? We have a big problem. We have all that carbon. We have this potential warming, or I'm sorry, that's going to happen uh, within these time frames, right? And so why don't we look at solutions to that as a way to help our economy? Uh, and so basically researching this technology, building this carbon capture technology and maintaining it, that means jobs. That means economic activity. And so the only problem is, is political will, as always, right? Now, understand that these solutions will involve public and private money. And again, that does mean increased spending by governments, 
which will play a very large role in this, but also potential benefits for corporations. Yes, I know. Uh, and you know what? That's not going to be a bad thing if you actually have carbon capture and sequestration technology that works. Right now, it's a mess, and we don't have this uh, you know, set up to where we can do this effectively. Uh, that is something that now we're going to have to look at. Uh, but there is a role for the private sector to be able to do this, uh, which, again, involves jobs, which involves the economy. Uh, and so that's not only the only issue, though. The issue really is political will. Now, if we have people like Mitch McConnell and we have the Republican Party, which is anti-science and anti-spending, then no, we're not going to get anything done on this. We're not going to go forward. But, I mean, we have to have people that are more forward-thinking like AOC. Okay? We need to have people that are forward, more forward-thinking than just rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement. We need big, big bold action. We need a, a New Deal type of thing. A New Deal program. For example, maybe one that is green? If only something like that was proposed. Oh, right. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.